Hi, I'm Vivian Ariola and I'm a 15 year survivor of non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Well, my journey started essentially about how many years ago? How long ago? Well, 15 miles now. Um, I was doing a lot of things. I was very active and first thing I discovered I got shingles and when I went to, to the doctor he said shingles is you're too young for this what is going on and literally that's also when I started fainting and things of that sort <clears throat> and essentially that's when my immune system started to break down then I was walking for my friend's daughter and it was for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society because she had leukemia and she lost her battle. Two months after that, I got diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I discovered the tumor and unlike other tumors, some people can't see them. I was washing my face and I felt my neck and I said, what is that? Well, if it was a zit, I would have popped it, but I didn't. <clears throat> I went to the doctor and said, hey, let's check this out. So he went in, he said, oh, here's antibiotics, go home. I went home and this little zit turned into a golf ball, started growing. I said, oh, I don't think I'm growing an Adam's apple to the left, nor new stuff downstairs. So I think we need to see a specialist. So they sent me to a specialist. And when the doctor went in, with the needle. <clears throat> Most surgeons don't make faces when they put needles in your neck. I guess it was so hard that he stopped and his eyes kind of like this and I said oh that's not a good sign and he walked and he left the room. Well he took the needle out first <laughs> so to say. Um, I went I'm nosy went to check out my paperwork and there it was um, abnormal lymphatic cells blah 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 hmm so I go sit down and wait for him said, oh I'll see you at surgery and I said oh wait wait a moment um I just need to ask you because I have to could it be cancer I just proceeded to tell them I go because I won't be mad if you're wrong but if you're right I need to know how to prepare myself and then he nodded yes and I said, okay, I'm going to go buy some wigs and some scarves so and prepare. And yes, I did have my pity party. Um, you know, it wasn't all fun, but I just told myself, I'm going to give myself my 10 minutes to cry and then know how to fight it. And when I went to see the oncologist, you know, they didn't quite say cancer yet, but <laughs> oncologist is a cancer doctor. So I knew that it was something bigger than I thought. He says, you have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And, and I asked him, could it be genetic? He goes, no. And he goes, could be your environment, <clears throat> could be stress, and etc." And I said, environment, oh yeah, I had a very tough job. Stress, yes, I had a very toxic relationship. And that made changes in my life to give up things that stress me out. I had a tumor in my neck that grew from a pebble to a golf ball to a grapefruit size and yet the 180 pound tumor that was involved in my life left so I could get better. I will tell you cancer may have saved my life but now it gives me a purpose. I believe God brought me here for a reason to do things for others. I used to tell my sister when I was sick. I knocked on the door and I said, God said my room's not ready yet. I lost her three years ago and her room was ready. You never know. So pursue your life and keep going forward. Whatever treatment you choose, whatever path you choose, be on the positive side because it's only going to get better. And surround yourself with positive people because that's what you need. Any negativity needs to leave your life. We can't, we can't escape it but we don't have to accept it. And knowing that one day there will be a cure, hopefully in our lifetime, if not after our lifetime, there will be a cure. So I continue to do this. So do good for yourself, 
let go of the stress, eat better. I'm not skinny, but eat better. But you can do good for yourself. So that's my message to you. Let's go survive, let's go fight, let's celebrate life. A little anecdote about my experience. When I was going through surgery, I said to my surgeon, I go, if you cut my vocal cords, doctor, because it's so close to me on my neck, don't bring me back. <laughs> Obviously he did a good job. So, and the first thing I did was sing when I woke up and here's a little song that I dedicate to my sister who's gone, but also to all of us. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me.